Okay, hello to the Pan African Women's Entrepreneur Network, the Aspiring Entrepreneurs Program. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here with you virtually and excited for you to participate in this amazing program. I know there were so many applications, so feel proud that you are here and take it seriously because that means you're sitting in a seat that someone else wanted. So my name is Jenny Alborani, and these are all the ways that you can connect with me. I love building community around entrepreneurship, so I hope to see you out there. So I love, love, love entrepreneurship. I love helping people see their potential through an entrepreneurial mindset. I am passionate about entrepreneurship and the role that it plays in economic development, increasing access to opportunity, and I'm an advocate for increased diversity in entrepreneurship and the development of new businesses. I am at the end of the day, above everything else, I am passionate about increasing access to entrepreneurship. My focus is to empower people to create their own lane of opportunity, and I believe that entrepreneurship is a great equalizer. So I did live abroad out of the United States. I've earned my master's degree in entrepreneurship 14 years after my undergrad um, from Trinity College Dublin. There I focus on a global perspective of entrepreneurship, the ecosystem, the process, and outreach education. And I'm going to talk a little more about my time abroad later on in the presentation. So I'm the director for the Center for Entrepreneurship at Transylvania University. We encourage entrepreneurial thinking and career development for students in any academic major by providing hands-on real-life experiential opportunities. I'm also the founder and a consultant of the EI District, the Entrepreneurship and Innovation District. It's a boutique consulting company focused on entrepreneurship education and helping small businesses grow as well. We've worked with startups, small businesses, investors, policymakers in the US, Ireland, Oman, and international markets. So throughout this program, you are going to learn many skills, strategies, and the framework to start and grow your business. But today, my message to you will be how to embrace your entrepreneurial mindset and spirit, especially when times get challenging. And we hear this term a lot. What is an entrepreneurial spirit? What is an entrepreneurial mindset? An entrepreneurial spirit is those of us who have a true passion for building something great and willing to push themselves to the limits to achieve big goals. And that something great is you. And by having this approach, you will grow and evolve rather than become stagnant and stale. This is a way of thinking that will empower you to overcome challenges, adversity. It'll allow you to make decisions and take response responsibilities. Then you can constantly improve your skills, learn from your mistakes and failures. And it's just this beautiful iteration. So today I'm going to share six tips to embrace your entrepreneurial spirit and mindset. And I'm going to do this telling you um, a story through my life journey to becoming an entrepreneur that I am today. So number one, connections and support are key. The power of having a family mem member, a friend, social support is key. And just like entrepreneurship, this will also be an iteration. Try to find like-minded people like you're doing here in this program. You can't always do it alone. Um, so be sure to form coalitions and community, find partners to help you go farther. I am grateful that I was raised to have this entrepreneurial mindset at home, although it wasn't apparent to me as I was growing up. So I was born in Seoul, Korea. I was adopted at six months old. To this day, I've never met my birth parents or my foster mom. But this is me and my mom in Korea. She and my great grandmother flew to Seoul and spent two weeks learning about Korea and the culture. And then I was raised in Cincinnati, Ohio in the United States um, with my sister, Laura, and my brother, Kyle. I am grateful, truly grateful for all that my parents gave me and more importantly, raised me to be a strong, independent woman. 
My father is an entrepreneur who has owned his own business. And I can remember at a young age interacting with customers. My mom has managed a small business and honestly is truly the backbone of this company. But growing up, I felt my mother was hard on me. I thought she was tough on me, but I didn't realize until I got older that she was preparing me for a world that's tough on women and for me to be prepared where women in society are often marginalized. She taught me about being financially responsible and independent. She instilled grit, determination, and perseverance and basically to always work hard, but most importantly, to never give up. So from my experience, the lessons my mother taught me prepared me to be an entrepreneur and a businesswoman. It's tough for an entrepreneur. A lot of people question you. They say no, and you need to have that inner spark and determination to know that what you're doing will make a difference. And I think this is important because when you face adversity and challenges, you need that inner strength and support system to pull you through and grow. So during my younger years, me and my sister here, who is also adopted from Korea, we we're the only minorities in our school. I struggled through school to fit in to find my tribe. I was bullied through my primary education. My experiences made me question who I was, where did I come from? And I allowed the behavior of classmates to question my own self-worth. I started to second guess the power of connections if, and if I would ever truly have a support system. But later, um, I learned that it's not worth my time to allow these external voices to validate self-worth. And it takes work to practice, especially with social media in this click formation. I took time to develop deep connections with people and build a two-way healthy relationship with others. And I learned that it's the quality of relationships, not so much the quantity. And this goes for social media as well. So as an entrepreneur, you will have people. Some closest to you will question and doubt you. Just be sure to have another outlet and network to lean on. If you ever need someone to talk to, reach out to me. But you already have this program and you have mentors and like-minded people to connect with. Okay, number two. Entrepreneurial spirits question how it can be done better and how we can constantly improve. Entrepreneurial spirits cannot help themselves. We are constantly curious about how things can be improved and will seek to find out the why. Entrepreneurial spirits are not afraid to go against the majority to drive change. So after high school graduation, I did what society said I was supposed to do and I went to attend college, but then I dropped out. I eventually would go back I dropped out again, and then I had my son at a young age, and as a single mom decided I really wanted to do better for myself. I started to question how I could do it better, so I committed myself. I went back to school. I earned my bachelor's degree in business through an accelerated program. I knew I wanted to do better for my son, and I kept questioning my why, and my why is my son. Without my parents' support, though, and helping out with my son, I worked full-time, I attended school full-time, I worked on, as a waitress on the weekends, and by the way, I took on a ton of student loans at the end of my bachelor's degree. So even with my parents' help, with my son, it wasn't easy. I cried, I wanted to quit so many times, but I always went back to my why, and that is this little guy here. He's not so little anymore, though. So another why that kept me going was to work for as a pharmaceutical rep. I had met a big pharma manager through the power of networks and instant, instantly recognized that this career could allow me to support myself, my son, my financial future, but I had to finish my degree. More importantly, it was a career I could manage as a single mom, and I was proud of myself for graduating. I knew I wanted more. So after graduation, I questioned my future, how it could be better, and took the risk to become a pharma rep. This was hard because I spent a great deal of time away from my son for college, and I had to go to training for two weeks without seeing him. 
But this career is very lucrative in the States. I question constantly how things could be better in that field, used my entrepreneurial mindset, and took off. I won the highest honor award and was able to take my son, my why, to Hawaii as part of my reward. So remember, be curious and always focus on your why. And isn't it amazing how life can throw a curveball and instantly your entire thinking process changes? You change as a person and your values and perceptions could change too. Your entire ideology often changes. So say hello to Snickers and Scout. I eventually met someone. I got married. My mindset shifted. I had everything I thought I wanted, a proper textbook life, married with proper societal roles, a mom, dad, son, even the dogs. And we decided that I would quit working my pharma sales dream job and start working as a stay-at-home mom for the family business. Seemed picture perfect, and the reward was having so much time back with my son and that I had to sacrifice while studying and working. And to me, life was perfect. My life was perfect for years. I had the cars, the endless budget of spending, the big house, but then life threw another curveball from the other end of the spectrum. And he decided one day he wanted a divorce. He didn't want to be with me anymore. I remember that day I left for errands. When I came back, he had a suitcase and an apartment already lined up. Years of this per picture perfect life, just when I thought life was good and out of nowhere, my life changed in an instant. But that traumatic experience changed the whole course of my life forever and has brought me here today with you. I cried, I grieved, I was scared, I screamed, I was confused. The process was extremely difficult and extremely lonely. The people who I thought were my support circle shamed me, they questioned me, and I felt alone. The house was in his name, I had no savings. No credit, no retirement. I didn't even have a bank account in my own name or even my own car. But one day I realized, I remember waking up and thinking, I don't want to live like this anymore. I needed that time alone, though, to come to that realization. I needed to shake up and redefine my life. The universe truly gave me a gift, one that was very painful in the beginning, so I could really grow and find myself. So number three, you have an optimistic view on possibilities. I started to question how my life could be better. How could I come back and be stronger and better? And I remember what I said earlier, entrepreneurial spirits are always thinking about how things could be done better. But it wasn't easy. This was hard, really hard emotional work. I found a way to survive and thrive after a traumatic experience from thinking that my life was over to learning how to build my own independence and future. My relationships and networks are stronger now because I know who I am and I know the values that are true to me. I took that time to reflect and really work out who I am and who I want it to be. So I'll say this again, it's emotional, hard work. I had many times taken a break and a breath to think about my why again, my son, and think about all the possibilities of this new life I could create. I literally became my own personal business model that was evolving and growing. Our minds are super powerful on both ends of the happiness spectrum, and it can be difficult to claw our way back out of a dark hole. But I decided during this grieving process, no one ever again would be or have that much power over my freedom, my independence, and my future. I knew the only way to do that was to shift my mindset, and I decided to become the entrepreneur of my life. This meant I needed to find my passion for building something of my own, and I had to commit myself that I'm willing to really push myself to achieve these new goals and new life. Entrepreneurial spirits and mindsets, we don't spend time thinking on what we can't do. We spend time thinking on what we can do. 
So when you're optimistic about possibilities, the excitement follows and you'll start to push those boundaries to what you thought was impossible and thinking that anything is possible and having the tenacity to accomplishing it. One thing I promised myself though, is that it would be a journey, not a, it would be a marathon, not a sprint. I needed to be agile and open to all new possibilities. And this was scary and exciting. So I started to take stock of my health. I started weight training, connecting with the outdoors and focusing on my mental health. Um, my son and I started to train together and all of this ended up giving me more confidence and appreciation for my own self-worth inside and out. And then I could seek to find a true passion of my own. So number four, you're in tune with your passion. And when you're passionate about something, you will be energized and motivated to push through anything that will stand in the way. And because I fell in love with my own health journey, I started my own personal training and coaching business called Genergy. It was my name plus energy. And the core concept was how to transform and harness good, positive energy to be you. And once looking for a space for my own facility, I fell in love with real estate. I started my own real estate business and that included commercial real estate. So I started helping entrepreneurs open their businesses. This organically grew into a consulting business with entrepreneurs who were looking to start, grow, or scale into brick and mortars. And by organically, I also mean I believe my story of overcoming life, life challenges and energy resonated with women. I started to work with a large network of women who wanted to forge their own independence through entrepreneurship. I realized I had a new passion to educate as many women as possible about entrepreneurial mindsets and entrepreneurship. So hopefully less people will ever have to go through a painful experience like a divorce like me again. And what I realized is that by creating my own business, I was giving back to a community of women where we could build camaraderie, connections, and networks. And during this time, I was empowering women to build their own empire. Women who were single, married, divorced, all amazing women that could relate to embracing an entrepreneurial mindset. We naturally work together to uplift one another. This is one of the businesses that I worked with, and now she's been intentional on hiring and uplifting women as well. One thing I love to do is work with the next generation of entrepreneurs. So I love working with young women lead, sharing how to embrace this entrepreneurial mindset with young women. And now I get to do that with the students at Transylvania University. So I bootstrapped all my businesses and entrepreneurship is hard. And remember, entrepreneurial spirits don't give up because it gets hard. It's our mindset and our passion that ignites that spark to keep us moving. I decided to build my own network so I could have connections and support when we really needed each other the most. And after this time, I reached a whole other pivot in my life. So number five, entrepreneurial spirits take strategic risks. Risk taking does not mean you blindly jump into action. Risk taking includes strategic moves and understanding that nothing is guaranteed it's the ability to see long term and with the uncertainty, you are able to be agile and adapt to change. So just as my businesses were thriving, I took a risk. I decided to take a year off and after 14 years from graduating from my bachelor's to go back to school for my master's degree, my son was entering his third year of university and it was time for me. So I was yearning for something more to build my business and my brand. I decided to invest in my education. I had already um, acquired the experience and intuition. So I decided to seek a formal education in entrepreneurship. I applied to many schools and decided to attend the most highly ranked Trinity College Dublin. I'm proud to be an alumnus because I often tell everyone I meet that my school is ancient and prestigious. It's 400 years old. It is just a really exciting feeling 
when I was there on campus. And to be honest, more honest with you, I chose Trinity because of Ireland's commitment to entrepreneurship and innovation. Um, they use it as a catalyst for economic growth. I was intentional on choosing Trinity College Dublin due to its proximity um, to connections with startups, accelerators, incubators, and in international networks of the business school. And this is a photo of my cohort. I built a network without having to even leave the classroom, which is what you want to take advantage of here too, is I took the time to find out more about their business idea and entrepreneurship culture. And since I graduated, I've, I have been brought on as startup consultant, um, even with their ventures. So I love building a network of support and now they are scattered around the world. So taking risks can be strategic, even after losing everything and working so hard to build myself back up. I sold my home, I sold my car, everything in the house, and I moved to Dublin. This is a picture of my home in Dublin, the really tall building there. Um, but I just want to say again, there were naysayers. They were whispering in my ear, Jenny, don't do it. Jenny, you're crazy. What about your son, Jenny? And lots more. As human beings, we tend to be easily swayed by the noise and whispers, and therefore we may never end up living out our dreams because we listen to that. And after all, this would be the only place I've lived outside of my hometown in Cincinnati. I, was I scared? Was I nervous? No, I was so excited. And I let that excitement, the passion, that optimistic view drown out all that negative noise as well. My inner determination that my mother taught me helped drown out that noise. And I just went for it. I believed in myself. I took a pivot in my own life so I can invest in myself. And remember, entrepreneurial spirits are not afraid to go against the majority to drive change. And the best part is my why, again, my son came to see me for his Christmas break as well. So during my academic year, COVID hit, classes went online. I traveled to Amman to meet my partner, um, my husband now, and my family there. It was just the safest place to be at that time. I was able to write my dissertation, finish my degree requirements. But one of the benefits of being there was um, being able to really ingrain myself in the entrepreneurship culture in Amman and in the Middle East. So I was invited to speak about entrepreneurship to Omani locals and to contribute to really make a difference in their new economy. Here I am with 50 men presenting knowledge of entrepreneurship and during that moment, everything had come full circle for me. From someone who was terribly hurt by a man to now educating men about my industry. I connected with a whole new network with several entrepreneurs there and was able to learn more about the ecosystem and have these great opportunities um, to hear about them that are available there as well. In fact, during that time, I decided to start consulting with entrepreneurs there as well. Number six, you execute and you initiate. Execution is everything. Ideas, goals, dreams are completely meaningless if you never act on them. Entrepreneurial spirits realize that execution is everything and above all to always learn from mistakes and failures. Some of my best learning in my life, in my opinion, is taking action, getting outside of your comfort zone, testing, failing, learning. I was in a place where I launched, grew, bought, and sold my businesses with great success. And I think many of us will test, fail, but we can't forget the reflection piece of learning. I've had many self-discovery reflections and learnings due to my experiences from being a, a minority in my community, a young struggling mom, to being happily married, living the perfect life, to divorce chaos, the pain and hurt, and then reacting inside of my own mind uh, for reflection to, to become me, a strong, confident, and independent woman. So during my time of reflection, I have learned that um, if you can create a circle of support, be curious, um, have an optimistic view on possibilities, find your passion, 
execute with strategic risk, anything is possible. And during that time in my life, I remember thinking I can decide to either stay in a hole or start to build my own future and take this experience to define a new future for me rather than letting it define me. So after thriving from a divorce, I was unsure if I'd ever find a partner again, but now I have something more. I have this huge family who is passionate about uplifting me to my highest, and now I have the greatest support network in my life. And SKP, not only is she a businesswoman, but she is a business leader. I love her passion for people development. I love that she has found a way to share her network with all of you, and she has accomplished so much she is sharing her knowledge and lessons with you during this program. I'm so thankful for her for inviting me here again to share my story with you. This is why I'm so excited to be here and excited for you. You were carefully handpicked for this program. You're going to increase your entrepreneurial confidence, build a lifelong network and the skills to build a foundation to start and sustain and grow your business. So congratulations on doing that here at the Aspiring Entrepreneurship Program. Dreaming is the first step of entrepreneurship, whether your dream is about building a business, being independent, or turning your passion into work. Once you dream, what are the steps you need to take to make those dreams a reality? And you're doing that right here in this program. So I want to say, Thank you again. I'm going to close off. I really appreciate your attention and your time. Again, these are all the ways you can connect with me. Um, I, I'm excited to see you out there. Thank you so much for your time. And I look forward to your questions and your comments. Thanks so much.